what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the Blissroom on this device and that is the Blissroom on the Redmi Note 7 Pro 2 and on that device I have the official Blissroom running too but on the Redmi K20 Pro this is special because the first build is this one and let me show you in the about section which build is this here as you can see it shows team bliss up here in the android version section the android version is android 10 of course as you are noticing and here let me go back the security patch is of latest june 5th 2020 the stock kernel is perf kernel and there is a build number let me go back to the bliss version and here the bliss version is 12.8 on top we see the bliss roms logo we have the maintainer's name is taran 107 and then we have the bliss device as rafael or redmi k20 pro the official build is this one and this is the 12th june 2020 build the latest one as of right now i thought this is an initial build so it won't have a lot of features but i was totally wrong i'll show you why but let me show you this is the build over here it is about 900 mb so it does not have g apps included you have to flash g apps separately as of right now and i have used the open g apps arm 64 10.0 nano version talking about the flashing of this rom if you're coming from miui you just just need to remember one thing that in the latest orange box recovery you have to format data once then you can flash the latest firmware which is the 12.0.0.9 firmware then flash this rom and the gapps then fcrypt disabled if your storage is decrypted or if you want to go encrypted way then you just flash the firmware then the rom file and then the gapps and you reboot but if you're coming from a latest evolution x rom or something or any other latest custom rom i am assuming that you already on 12.0.09 firmware so if you're already on that firmware you do not need to flash the firmware separately again you just wipe cache dalvik system data then flash this rom file gapps file the fcrypt disabler if you are decrypted or if you are encrypted do not flash the fcrypt disabler so that is how you flash this bliss rom on this redmi k20 pro with the orange fox recovery now let me show you the quick settings panel this is how it looks like of course this has the tint over here looks pretty cool as you are noticing here and in this quick settings panel let me show you we do have a screen recorder this is the oxygen OS kind of screen recorder and you can change the resolution the bitrate fps over here of the video then you can also change the audio source to like the internal audio or the microphone audio lot of features of course always on display is there the dark theme feature is there then if I show you we have the data saver heads up notification disabling or enabling option and these are the quick toggles that you can add over here as you can see a lot of them are there but I do not see the FPS info kind of thing it, it is just not present right now FPS info is not there now talking about the stock launcher this is the blissify launcher by default present and on this launcher in the settings panel there are a lot of interesting features as you can see we do have the double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen it does work super fine you should not worry you can change the icon packs if you want to then show gradient on top and gradient on bottom both are there the one thing that i am missing over here is that in the app drawer you cannot disable this panel alone so that is one thing that i getting annoyed about i usually disable this kind of suggestion panel but yeah i cannot do it over here just a like request to the developer that if you're watching at least give us an option to disable this kind of panel it really helps to the left we have the google's discover page and swiping down gets you to the notification panel or the quick settings panel swiping up of course gets you to the app drawer and the ui is very smooth no issues whatsoever the widgets are working totally fine here as you are noticing and double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen does work fine the unlocking with the figment scanner let me show you the figment scanner speed over here is pretty decent and it works almost 100% of the time so I do not have any issues. The figment scanner is very very fast and accurate over here and even the animations are pretty good. I think this is the lost FOD or lineage OS fingerprint on display kind of thing. So yeah it is pretty fast and convenient and it does work every time. Now when the night light is turned on let me try the figment scanner speed. So as you can see it worked but I had to try a couple of times to get it to work. Let me try it again with the left thumb. It's not unlocking. Now it did. So at least it takes three tries with night light for some times. But right now it's working actually I think. So yeah as you can see it's working. Let me try from the lock screen itself. 
so yeah the film scanner is actually working fine i do not see a lot of issues over here even with night light turned on and of course we do have the face unlock feature let me set up the face unlock and show you here it shows about face unlock and the camera pops up setup is almost done so yeah it's done now let's try the face unlock let me just double tap on the status bar and let's okay so as you can see if i double tap on the lock screen just like this it pops out the camera and it tries to unlock the phone so that's cool and all but i will try to disable this thing if it is there let me see so as you can see there is this skip lock screen if i disable that and now if i try again popping out the front camera it is unlocking the device now i just have to swipe up to unlock i would like that feature where i have to swipe up then the camera pops up but yeah i'm fine with it the face unlock is pretty reliable too it is working fine here talking about the stock camera we have the miui camera by default i was expecting the old kind of camera that is not the case here the like stock camera here is the miui camera so i am happy about it here as you can see all the lenses are working totally fine no issues in the video mode 4k 60 fps option so you get everything with this miui camera it works flawlessly also in the slow motion mode we have the 960 fps mode so that's not a problem and of course the front camera and stuff works totally fine here no issues even portrait and stuff should be working fine as you can see so yeah the front camera and the rear camera both are working fine with this stock miui camera no issues i have also installed the latest google camera this is the yonix version 1.9 i guess and this has been working totally fine too with like night sign and stuff and with all the lenses this google camera is working fine here are some pictures i have taken with the google camera on this rom before I show you the customizations, let me talk about the DRM info and stuff. Here as you can see, it shows Widevine level 1. So that means we have the 1080p support in Netflix or Amazon Prime here. So you should not worry about it. Banking apps like Google Pay works right out of the box here. So you do not need to worry about like flashing Magisk and using Magisk Hide or something. Now in the settings panel, we do see this Blissify settings where we will find all the customizations. First, let me show you the battery settings. This is how it looks like. It looks very, very cool. And in the bottom, we have the battery temperature section, screen on time section, and then the smart charging option is there. Then we also have this battery saver extreme power saving mode. Then we have the battery charge warning settings and then adaptive or auto kind of battery settings is there. And we have the thermal profiles, which you can control per app. So that's cool. And this visualization of this battery looks pretty cool in my opinion. You can just tap over here to see the full usage. The battery life should be pretty good. You can get about 7 to 8 hours of screen on time easily on this round. The battery life is very very decent. And the 18 watt fast charging does work super fine over here so you should not worry about it. Let me go back. We have the display settings and night light option is there. This works flawlessly no issues but the, this nice touches are there that like even this button has this kind of gradient tint. So this looks pretty cool in this ROM and in the volume panel as you can see this is how it looks like and even on this volume panel we have this kind of accent looks pretty cool and if I like swipe like this give me a little bit of haptic feedback so that is a pretty cool thing and you can of course as you can see expand this thing you can put the phone into silent or vibrate from here so yeah pretty much working great in the live display settings we have the color calibration mode and from here can control the rgb of the screen then let me go back we have the screen attention kind of thing over here then we have font size display size etc full screen apps are there so you can push particular apps to full screen double tap to wake is working super fine anti flicker mode or the dc dimming is there and then we have the dark theme override force dark and this force dark is like forces some apps to push into dark mode so like me y12 or something so yeah and in the sound settings, we have this kind of media call, etc. volume, of course. Then over here, we have link, ringtone and notification kind of thing. Then inside vibration and haptics, we have the touch vibration, vibrate for calls, etc. You can change the ringtone vibration pattern too if you need. Then scrolling down gets you to this panel, this me sound enhancer or the audio direct. And from here, you can change these kind of headphones. I like the sound output over here with this Utherition preset. It works great with my me dual driver headphones. And this Hi-Fi Audio Direct is there too. You can disable the screenshot sound, touch sounds, etc. from here if you need. In the system panel, we have this Blissrom section. It shows Blissrom over here too. And inside gestures, we have the system navigation gestures. And from here, this Android 10 kind of gesture works fine. And you can change the gesture bar size. I did that. So that's why this gesture bar is pretty long for me. 
and you can change this kind of settings if you want there are a lot of customizations you can also use two or three button navigation if you want to and we also have this front camera LED disabling option and then front camera sound effects I have disabled the sound effects but these sound effects does work super fine and talking with the vaulty calls we do have the call recording option and VO Wi-Fi does work fine too over here but I did not enable it video calling and stuff should be working fine too over vaulty or something now let me go to this blissify settings where you will find all the customizations and as you can see there are a lot of customizations in the status bar section we have the clock style clock and date kind of option and i like the thing that wherever you go in this customization settings it shows where you are on like pretty bold icons right and you can auto hide it clock seconds you can enable that am pm style you can enable that and a lot of things like font size you can change that from here then we have the battery style as icon portrait circle dot circle normal circle hidden and then battery percentage you can enable it or inside the icon you can enable it then we have the battery percentage when charging and custom charging symbol is there battery bar option is there if you want to have the battery bar in the system icons we have the headset bluetooth etc icons over here and inside advanced systems we have the vaulty icons and i'm using this sony icon but you can choose from these many vaulty icons the vaulty works flawlessly here then we have the show logo option then logo position and logo style and stuff is there you can set any logo like this from here then we have the status bar weather weather placement and stuff 4g icon instead of lte bluetooth battery stats are there too now if we scroll down we have the brightness control so you can just swipe on the status bar to adjust the brightness of the screen this is a really helpful feature and i do use it on a daily basis now moving on to the quick settings we have the header kind of thing you can customize this header and like change any kind of thing like header provider you can change the single image or something if you want to then quick pull down is there you can choose from right or left then brightness slider on top or bottom you can choose or show when expanded kind of thing you can choose then auto brightness icon and stuff you can enable that column and row numbers for the quick setting toggles are there then we have blur behind quick setting so if you do this as you can see the background has been totally blurred I don't know if you can see it but yeah it looks cool inside animations we have the system animations list view animations toast animation and the animation style you can change it to flip or rotate of the quick setting titles and scrolling cache and stuff is there then you can set the screen off animation to crt or scale or simple fade i have changed it to crt to the buttons here we have the invert layout if you're using two or three button navigations that will help and edge long swipe action is there so if you are swiping edge to edge that will like trigger these many actions as you're noticing there are plenty of it and inside power menu we do have the advanced restart option so that's cool let me show you in the power menu if i tap restart you can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot from here or you can just reboot the system ui let me go back we have the end call long press for torch is there this has been working totally fine volume panel option is there you can change the volume panel to the left so you can control from here as you are noticing and the volume steps you can control it too we have the wake device and control playback etc with the volume buttons and then inside lock screen we have the lock screen clock style i have changed it a little bit but not from this one but you can use these kind of spider-man and stuff and here as you can see we have the clock font size etc and i have increased the size to 80 dp about and i have this good light kind of font but you can choose from these many fonts of the lock screen clock so that is cool that we have a lot of options and you can also set a accent color for your lock screen clock so that's cool let me scroll down we have the hide date widget and stuff but i am using it i have changed the font size too and here let me scroll down we have the quick settings and power menu and here we have the fod icon picker so we get plethora of icons are there for the figment scanner i have been using this one but you can choose any of them from here as you can see there are a lot of animations by default it is set to ripple i guess it is set to ripple for me at least i have changed it i guess and in the fod pressed state behavior we have the light changing color over here of the figment scanner you can change it to me by cyan white etc or these vivo kind of colors or your system accent color so that's cool and here we have the lock screen charging animation which appears in the bottom on the lock screen so i have changed it to flash but you can change it to these many options and here we have the lock screen charging info charging animation on the lock screen is there now we have the wake up on plug i have disabled that and we have this force fingerprint authentication this option is there on the redmi note 7 pro 2 and that works fine but here it does not work for some reason this is a like first official build so i am not like too worried about it i think they will fix it 
But right now, even when this force fingerprint authentication is turned on on the Redmi K20 Pro, the fingerprint icon just does not appear or the fingerprint kind of area does not appear whenever you are rebooting the device. You have to enter the pin once then it will appear. So yeah, that's one bug that I have noticed and we have the music visualizer weather and stuff. Let me go back to the gestures here. We have the double tap to sleep on the status bar and lock screen and then swipe to take screenshot is there. By default, this does not have this Asus kind of screenshot thing which you have to enable, I'll show that to you later on. But yes, we have the like Asus kind of long screenshot thing over here. In the notification panel, we have this edge lighting option. You can change the color for it if you want to. So that's cool, you can change like anything from here. Let me scroll down. We have the heads up disabling option. Notification, ticker, etc. is there. Custom notification count is there. We have this breathing kind of notifications. Then we have vibrate on connect call, call waiting and disconnect. Then blink flashlight for incoming call option is there too. And blink for call waiting is there too. Now inside themes, we have the like these kind of normal kind of customization, but you can change the accent preset from here. As you can see, we have these kind of bliss, etc. A lot of like accent presets are there, so you can choose from any of them. But here we have this RGB accenter from where you can change this one color. This I have set to red. And the other one is gradient picker like you can change any kind of gradient color from here you can change it to like a different color so that it will look like this with like two colors and here we have the primary color option in the dark theme if you set this bliss black it will go to that amulet kind of dark mode where everything is pitch black so yeah then we have the headline and body fonts and we get plethora of fonts here as you are noticing it, the options just does not end the customizations on this rom is just insane amount so yeah i have no issues in terms of customizations on this rom it is pretty much like more than evolution is pretty sure in the icon shape section we have these many icons and status bar icons are there too let me go back we have the more settings and from here we have this one ui kind of thing i don't know how it works and fingerprint authentication and error vibration is there now if you scroll down whenever you are having a notification we have this kind of icon over here from which you can like swipe the notifications so that's cool and here let me scroll down and in this system section we have the screenshot type and from where you can like change it to take full screenshot and extended screenshot that's how you get the asus kind of screenshot gesture it's set to full by default so with this full it takes a normal screenshot not that kind of long screenshot so if you want to enable that asus kind of screenshot feature you have to enable this takes full screenshot and extended screenshot from here in terms of daily driving performance this rom is just great no issues that i could find in terms of daily driving performance the ram management is very good no issues at all and here is the end to do and geekbench score of this rom i think this is a great option even if you are a gamer this rom will totally work for you because like all the games like Call of Duty and stuff does offer you the highest settings possible with anti-aliasing of course on this device. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tiro from KD and Tech signing off for today and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye now.